Well, 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 Thrashers, it is time to do this video since we're pretty much halfway through the year as far as albums are concerned. We are going to do it. The top 20 best albums of 2016 so far. We're in June, we're pretty much at the halfway point, and I'm going to do the top 20 best albums that I've reviewed so far this year with seven honorable mentions. But I do want to make a quick note that, yes, there are albums that came out earlier in the year that I haven't checked out yet. Albums, uh, let me look on my list. Uh, albums like Discharge, End of Days, uh, Destruction Under Attack, Avatar Feathers and Flesh, Devil Driver, Trust No One, Flotsam and Jetsam's self-titled album, Suicidal Angels, Division of Blood, Architects, All of Our Gods Have Abandoned Us, Lacuna Coil, Delirium, Melvin's Bass is Loaded, Volbeat, Seal to Deal, Let's Boogie, Dark Funeral, Where Shadow, Shadows Forever Rain, and Nails, You Will Never Be One of Us. Now, there were other albums that I didn't have on my list that I knew that came out, like Spiritual Beggars' album, and Agoraphobic Nosebleed, and even Hell Yeah's new album, and even some other hard rocky albums like Radiohead and stuff like that. I might get to those eventually, maybe during a time whenever I got more free time after I've caught up with everything else. But also a big note, there was another album that is on my list that did come out, Taria's album, The uh, Brightest Void. I'm saving that review for when the second half of the uh, uh, dueling albums come out with The Shadow Self. So both of those albums will be in one review later in the year in August. So without further ado, let's get into the list. So before we get into the top 20, let's look at the honorable mentions. We've got Flesh God Apocalypse with King, Omnium Gatherings, Grey Heavens, Redemption, The Art of Loss, Hatebreed, The Concrete Confessional, Baby Metal, Metal Resistance, yeah, come at me haters, Megadeth Dystopia, and Dream Theaters, The Astonishing, which this is going to prove that the, at the end of the day, what score I gave it upon review won't matter. Whereas The Astonishing, it's still a great album. However, it's just gotten lower in score, a lot lower. Because I just haven't found really going back to it as much as I would like to. But it doesn't mean it's a bad album. It's just, to me, just slipped in score as time has progressed. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Starting off at number 20, we've got Destroyer 666 with Wildfire. This crazy blackened thrash band has been going on for quite a long time, and they just maybe have made their best album today with Wildfire. Just very chaotic, fast, old-school sounding thrash with that blackened element thrown in on top, and it made for a phenomenal release. Number 19, we've got Caveller Talk with Natsford. I pronounced the name of the band right this time instead of uh, Cleaver Talk, as I called them in the review. But Caveller Talk taking that black and roll, hardcore, black metal, traditional metal, hard rock, rock and roll idea, and just brought it to new heights with this album. I really enjoyed it when it came out, and still enjoy it somewhat today. Uh, not somewhat, but I still do enjoy it today. Number 18, we have Rotten Sound with Abuse to Suffer. Riffs, 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 holy shit riffs, holy shit grindcore. It was just a brutal album that was just an onslaught assault of music, and that's all that can really be said. Number 17, we have Anthrax with Four All Kings. Anthrax come back after five years since Worship Music came out, and they come back and produce probably their best work well, I mean, Worship Music was a great album, but I say this album was better than Worship Music, and this is probably their best work since Persistence of Time back in 1990. This was a fantastic album, great vocals from Joey Belladonna, great guitar playing from Scott Ian and John from Shadows Fall. Very good stuff, definitely check it out. Number 16, an album I reviewed today, Gojira with Magma. This is a fantastic album. Despite, like I said in the review, it's simpler in comparison to their previous work, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It Actually, it helps diversify their sound a little bit instead of just going all complex all the time. They can show that, hey, we can, we can really play the slow parts 
and slower songs really well, just as much as we were on the complex songs. So definitely check that one out. Number 15, we have Rotting Christ with Rituals. Boy, it was this a dark album. Despite the fact they're, to me, no longer a black metal band or even a gothic metal band, they're now kind of more mellow death, doom, and avant-garde. This was an avant-garde, melodic death metal, doom metal album that kind of take influence from albums of the past, like uh, some of their older material, but bringing in influences from like Celtic Frost's Monotheus album, some influences of bands such as Flesh God Apocalypse, and more modern influences, some doom influences, mellow death. It just made for a diverse album, but a very dark album. When you hear an album title called Rituals, you expect it to be dark, and this really was dark. Number 14, we have Catatonia with The Fall of Hearts. Catatonia completely do a 180 with their sound, as opposed to the old gothic, doomy sound that they were known for for back in the day. They decided to go into the more prog metal, prog rock, alternative metal realm, and basically made like as if Breaking Benjamin went prog metal. And this is what it virtually sounded like, but it was just a fantastic album. Probably some of their longest songs to date, and just Jonas Rensky's vocals on this album were highly impressive to me, because he's got that soothing, low, soft voice that I really like about this band. Definitely check this album out. Number 13, we have Moon Sorrow with Jamalton Aka. If I pronounced that right, if I didn't, I'm sorry. I mean, these guys take the realms of folk metal, black metal, and prog metal, mix it together into their own sound, and they just make some long, epic, catchy tunes. There's even parts that are catchy, I'm going to say it. It's a sneak attack with their sound is that they have those catchiness within their songs as far as riffs go, but this was just an epic album that you people should check out. Number 12, Aborted with Retro Gore, a straight up brutal death metal album that was an, like I said with Rotten Sound, you want to talk about an onslaught assault that just punches you in the face over and over again, this is the album for you. Definitely look up this album if you haven't already. Number 11, we have Obscura with Acroasis. Holy crap, Obscura, come back after five years since their classic album, Omnivium. And while this isn't nearly as good as Omnivium, it don't have to be. It's still a fantastic album. Just phenomenal prog, death metal, tech death, whatever you may want to call this album. This... Just check it out. No words can really describe it. Number 10, we have Fallujah with Dreamless. Pretty much Fallujah taking their take on tech death with that more atmospheric death metal side to their sound and just bring it on to a cohesive sound and really just building off of what they've done in the past to make probably their best album so far to date. Definitely check that one out. Number nine, we have Aventasia with Ghost Lights. Pretty much, them and Dream Theater had big concept albums around the same time, but this blew the astonishing out of the water. It was a little more epic sounding. It told a greater story. And the great, like the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The special guest vocal appearances from people like Jeff Tate, uh, the former guy from Halloween, and Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister even did a great job on this album. If you're a fan of epic concept albums, definitely listen to this. Number eight, we have Gore Guts with the Pallades Dust EP. The only EP that I thought was worth checking out, and to me this should still be considered a full album, because it's a 33-minute song, and it's just phenomenal. Gore Guts taken all the influences of their albums of the past, such as Obscura, From Wisdom to Hate, and their last album, Colored Sands, mix it all together to create a 33-minute epic track slash album slash EP that's brutal, melodic, complex, and ambient. Do not sleep on this EP. Number seven, we have Exumer with The Raging Tides. Let's get to another thrash album. Really, this year has been the year for thrash and prog metal. This album was a straight-up old-school thrash-sounding al- old thrash album 
from an underrated German band. And these, and like I said in a review, this is a kind of record I think bands like Slayer need to make. While Repentless wasn't bad from what I heard, it's still nothing special. Slayer, if they ever do another album, take notes from albums like this and some other albums we're going to be talking about later. Number six, we have a monomark with Yom's Viking. Concept album from probably one of my all-time favorite mellow death bands because I love their Viking lyric, lyrical themes. And this album was just massive. It was fantastic work. Johan Hegg's voice just continues to be amazing to me with his deep, roaring vocals. And also with Doro Pesh making a guest appearance on the album to do something interesting. And also the song Raise Your Horns, probably one of the best metal anthems to come out in quite some time. Number five, we have Haken with Affinity. Haken just absolutely amazed me when I heard this album. Pretty much mixing elements from old school prog rock bands like Gentle Giant with the big vocal rounds, with the musicianship of Dream Theater, with that 7-8 string guitar tone at times of bands like Meshuggah and Periphery. And Periphery's got an album coming out this year. Holy crap. But with Haken, they really pushed the envelope with this album. Definitely worth listening to. Number three, Porknagar with Winter Thrice. People kind of saw this coming, and only, and this album to me has just gone up in score. It was, it was rated a 95 when I reviewed it, but it's gone up to a 97. This is just fantastic prog, folky, Viking metal at its finest, with some of its black metal vocal styles thrown in the mix there at times. That dual vocal attack of Vintersorg and ICS Vortex was just awesome. The musicianship was on point, and just the epic quality of the music just still blows me away. This is an album I cannot stop listening to. I really dig it. Number two, Death Angel with The Evil Divide. Death Angel has made, or some people would argue, maybe their best album ever. I still think The Ultraviolence, their first album, is still their best, but this is definitely a modern thrash classic. I mean, just Rob's voice throughout the entire thing. Like, at times he sounds like Joey Belladonna or Dio, and sometimes he'll sound just like he did back in the day. This was just phenomenal thrash metal for the modern era at its finest. And then that leads us to number one. The only album this year so far that has gotten a perfect score of 100 out of 100, and so far it has stayed there. Vector with Terminal Redux. Prog Thrash with blackened vocals thrown into the mix. This was just a massive album with long songs, epic concepts with that sci-fi lyrical theme, and just absolute chaos within the music, and just riff-heavy, like so many riffs just stick into your head as after you listen to this album. So, so far this is the only perfect album this year so far, but... It's still a long way to go, and my opinion could change as time goes on, because we still got a lot to go, and there's still a lot of big bands with records coming out. You know, Metallica just announced they're going to potentially have an album out in the fall. You got Avenged Sevenfold, possibly with a record, Poss and then you get Testament will possibly have an album out later in the year, and then already some other bands have announced albums for this year, like I said, Periphery, Next month we got Fate's Warning, which should be interesting. The Return of Despised Icon. You got Taria's Dual Albums. Uh, Carnifex, Sabaton, Sodom, Devon Townsend, Vader, Insomnium, Epica, Hail Spirit Noir. Holy crap, there's still a lot to digest within this year, and it's still a long way to go. So this list will definitely be definitely be shaken up by the time we get to December for the overall top 50 album of the year list. But thank you guys for watching this video. Peace.